Okay, uh, my name is Kuma Buenze from Mboka, Anazambe, God's Universal Village in Gabon. And today, um, I want to talk about something that is perhaps the most important element uh, for us at this time. Um, I really need to, uh, in an effort to continue our work and what we actually do at Mboka Nazambe, I really need to provide an alternative to the, uh, the supposed authority upon a boga and what's happening with the boga in the Western world and what's happening uh, in Gabon, most importantly. So I'm going to start uh, the best I can at actually providing some examples and expose a little bit of what's happening at the moment. So we may or may not be aware that the plant medicine movement, um, and I'm talking about uh, a boga right now, so uh, which is actually really Ibogaine, is receiving massive dollars funding by big companies. Now there are people hiding behind non-for-profit situations who claim that they return to the indigenous in Gabon, which are affiliated with companies that receive funneled money, that receive grant money from large uh, universities and other pharmacological companies. Now, the, the point of this whole situation is at the moment, these people are no different. The people that are actually encouraging the communities to grow Iboga. So there's one, one place in Gabon, I don't need to say the name, that hide behind this. That behavior is an extortion of indigenous knowledge. No matter what supposed well-intended uh, rhetoric this person may deliver, I'll give some examples. When the English came to places like Ceylon or India, or America or Australia and they forced the indigenous to grow crops they enslaved them with the promise of money now we all know this now what you need to know is that there's a drug epidemic in America and in the world we know that and they're hiding behind helping others but what they're doing to get that position is enslaving indigenous forcing them to grow something like Iboga, nothing is returned to them. They hide behind the fact, oh, this is helping those communities. Now, I'm going to go further into this. Number one, it enslaves them in a master-slave mentality, which is the complete antithetical teaching of what Iboga is doing. Iboga is brotherhood of man and unity in sharing. Not one cent will be returned of a $42 million grant that's been given by the Kentucky State of America. Will, will be received or seen by any Gabonese. Right now, Munga and I here with Mboka Nazambe are paying to feed Babongo, seven villages of Babongo pygmies who give us the very right or the ability to have Iboga. They are not recognized by their own government and how can they be recognized by these people taking Iboga? They are the guardians of this plant and the spiritual knowledge inside is unity and brotherhood of man. When money becomes involved, this is a severance, a division. It's enslavement. And what's happening in Gabon right now, and I'm very passionate about this and people should know, is no different from enslaving millions of Congolese by you wanting your Apple phone, taking lithium from that country. Now, we all know about that and we'll all talk about that if we're involved in plant medicine. But we're not considering what's going on in this world, in Gabon. I know living there and here in Costa Rica what's going on. This is destroying the culture of Bwiti. Everyone wants to grab money. Iboga cannot be sold. It is not about money. Deforestation results as the planting of Iboga increases. Number one, logging companies from China and Germany profit from these very attributes. These non-for-profits who come along and say they're helping communities they're further enslaving the community and taking a sacred plant and then, get this, making it a pharmaceutical and then claiming that they're using a plant medicine to help an epidemic of drugs in the West. This is a complete lie. 
Now, there are many people involved with this in Gabon, and I want people to listen, and if you're very interested, I'm exposing all of them. There's a company now, too, in Canada, hiding behind this association. Now, they are receiving funding on government levels and by large pharmacological companies. How is that a plant medicine? Isolating Ibogaine from a boga is a drug. It's not a plant medicine. And it does not impart the, the, the correct rhetoric or knowledge, spiritual knowledge. The guardians of Iboga are the Babongo Bwiti. Now everyone's rubbing their legs together like, with, like crickets with the money and all of these retreat centers that exist in the West are all getting excited because they're all going to profit at the expense of my Babongo brothers and sisters and children who will never know their true tradition through this neo-colonial movement that is no different from the initial colonial movements into those countries 500 years ago. Just because we've got a drug epidemic, which is created by your governments, by the way, does not entitle you to have the right to go and enslave communities and water down the, the great knowledge of unity and brotherhood of man, which potentially saves the planet, not giving them a pharmacological answer to save a, an addiction. That won't work and never will work because you can't define Iboga. The moment you define a bugger, you've lost it. Iboga is about sovereignty, knowing that you are everything. You are God now in connection. You are a manifestation of Zambekana in life. Look up State of Kentucky. Look up these companies in Canada that are move, moving behind this and getting grant who have rallied the governments. You have places like Ibando in, in Africa that are associated with people that are associated with others. Terranosis in Canada, Ambio, they're all affiliated, Blessings of the Forest. They're all been at this for 10 years rallying the government. They're friends with government officials in, in Gabon who are corrupt. Number one, they've been working with these people, rallying them for 10 years. Do you think that they're going to want to relinquish their work? All of a sudden, someone says, oh no, hold on, this isn't good for communities. Do you think they're going to let that go? These people are colonialists. They're neo-colonialists. And whether they think they're helping Gabonese or not, whether they don't know or whether they know, either way, they're completely stupid and at fault. Whether it's premeditated or not, it's a lack of awareness and a lack of respect for, for, for indigenous peoples. All because we want Ibogaine, because our government creates a, an epidemic of drugs like fentanyl in your country. No one deserves Iboga under that pretense. No one. And Iboga should never be handed, handled by anyone other than a Ganga. Never. Never. And we'll stand behind this. I'm going to give you another example. Native Americans, right now, and from beginning of, of their inter interaction with the colonials, have been impeded, damaged, murdered, enslaved. We know that. Now at the moment, and we know that, that they're protecting pipelines, they're protecting areas where they're, they're producing pipelines. Now, you're all behind that and helping that, but you want to take a boga, an ibogaine? It's no different. People need to wake up. This isn't about your self-important interests. And who's profiting from your self-important interests are these companies I just mentioned. They're all going to lo line their pockets. Do you think that they're going to give anything to my Babongo brothers and sisters who are starving? Who originate the tradition? who are the very reason that they actually have access to Iboga? No. They go down there and give them some pens and paper, which further indoctrinates them towards an education process that is uh, from modernity. They don't need that. In Boko Nazambe, we work towards bringing these people towards their true knowledge, which is God in man, the reconciliation of God in self in Butu, and bring them into initiatic processes that accelerate their purpose and meaning spiritually, which elevates the planet. Because the center of the earth today is Gabon. This is a war on consciousness. This is a war on spirituality. And this is a war on the indigenous. People need to really have a look at this and have a look. And I want and encourage you to contact me. Reach out. And in people that are involved with Iboga, forget anything that you feel about me or anyone else. Reach out and align yourself with this knowledge. It's important that we, that we come together over this. Millions of dollars are being thrown at this. And if you know anything about Gabon or have ever been at Gabon, and I'm not just talking about going to Magandas in Buffoon on the side of a highway. 
I'm talking about living there and actually living in a village atmosphere and you know how things work, then you'll be very surprised at the damage that's caused to indigenous rite of passage. People are hiding behind well-intended ideas and conduct. They say, oh, well, we've got a drug epidemic and we're helping and we want to help people with drug, drug epidemic. That's not how you're going to help. How you're going to help is use that $42 million to actually expose your own government and then take the drugs off the street and give these people mental education. They don't deserve or could even begin to understand the true knowledge of Iboga. You're giving them a drug. They might as well have the ones that exist. Ibogaine is a drug. Doesn't matter what they say. And then these people argue, oh no, it's not, it's from a plant. Yeah, every pharmaceutical is from a plant. <laughs> oh my God. Think of the damage that you're causing the indigenous. You're further enslaving them and forcing them into a master-slave relationship upon which you're throwing money at them, which makes them grow iboga. And what happens on the ground? They start to fight. They kill one another. They take things from one another. No one's considering this. And we need to wake up. I'm giving a very, very plain and simple rudimentary example of what's happening. And I'm pleading with people to actually start to have an understanding of what's going on. It goes further and deeper than what I'm actually going to give you superficially here right now. I will expose all of the people involved. I'll expose where the money comes from, where it's going to, and where it isn't going. And all you've got to do is reach out to me. Be very careful with who you deal with if you're interested in a boga and ingesting a boga, where you go. Because even now, without Ibogaine and a boga now, this un unethical practice continuing through these forms of Asangidia, Gondena, de Puma, which are all hiding behind the name of Masoka Buiti. We need to be very careful. This is black market behavior when you go to these retreats often and they don't know and they're funding this type of behavior and they're contributing their money to these, these people that I'm mentioning who are enslaving people and then standing there and saying we're Buiti and we're healing you. Now, all of these people, like I said, will be rubbing their legs together like crickets, excited about the fact that they're going to accelerate their business. This isn't about money. Iboga can never be about money. All cents, every last cent is contributed from here to the NGO, which we are, and the seven villages we look after. It's very important. Who has asked permission of, of the Babongos whether we can grow Iboga and take it? Has anyone asked that? No, the Gabonese government haven't asked it. Blessings of the forest haven't asked it. They just go in and of course these people are going to be excited to grow a boga because they're promised money. Or their community will improve. They'll get a school and a hospital. Yeah, that really, that's really helped in the past, hasn't it? We've got plenty of examples. Rwanda, Uganda, Nigeria, Ghana. Let's, let's just rattle them off. Has that helped? And Boko and Zambia are about restoring, reforming and reconciling tradition within the people so they have the right to speak about their elevation of soul and knowledge for the planet. And that happens by returning them to their initiatic process and rights and being the holders and guardians of the knowledge and application of something like Iboga. This is a sad situation. Every time you go and have Ibogaine from this point on, and get this, these people I've just mentioned also have and are affiliated with and own Ibogaine clinics in Mexico. This, this is no different from a, from a G company or a, or a, a, a Illuminati based um, system of business, of central, of central business operation. Think about it. They offer money to communities, enslave them, get them to grow the aboga, rally governments, get grant money, promise tourism and other things line their pockets with the money, return nothing, then they double dip and sell Ibogaine through clinics in Mexico. Think about that. This is highly important. This isn't a joke. I can take this further for everybody. Do you know the type of damage that we're going to experience to tradition because we're going to be taking a burger and slip, slipping it and splitting it, I should say, into Ibogaine? Buiti's not a game. The knowledge of true Buiti, not the colonialized forms that we're talking about, the modern forms, I'm talking about true Babongo Buiti, the knowledge there is enough to repair the planet. 
You are not protected or will never be spiritually safe by isolating the compound of ibogaine and giving it to someone. That's no different from giving them um, benzos or Xanax or any of these other things. It's the same. That's not how Iboga works. Iboga doesn't work by you saying, okay, it targets addiction and helps this and I've got all the science and it helps the neuroplasticity and all this. It doesn't, that's not going to help the individual understand. They'll have it and have a good effect for a while and the problem will come back. Maybe not as an addiction. I know because I work with people with addiction. They have to know why and the true science of Bwiti and Iboga is showing them why. You're now allowing governments to control knowledge and enslave indigenous because it's still a stiff spiritual war in Africa. Their behavior right now of these people that are funding these movements and are behind them, which I will expose, is no different from when that first slave ships arrived in Africa. Controversial? No. Truthful. Fact. It's no different from what's going on in the Congo. It's absolutely the same. It's colonialism. It's neo-colonialism through economy. And whether, once again, whether they know it or whether they premeditate it, either way, they're ignorant. And that ignorance is what causes pain to indigenous races and the holders of knowledge and Africa. All of us are spawned from carbon, from black. We are all born from the center of the earth today. Think about your wants when you consider Iboga and Ibogaine. Think about the ramifications. And whilst I'm here, I'll say the same thing has happened with ayahuasca. The same things happened with your cacao that you use for cacao ceremonies. The same. The plant medicine movement is out of control. It's a neo-colonial system of which you have not healed yourself from the racial prejudices that has been handed down through you, through your collective trauma, through your present position with your governments. All because you want to be healed. None, none, that's not the healing. That's actually escaping yourself. And you'll never heal. I know people that have had hundreds of ayahuasca ceremonies and are still busted. There you go. There's my point. Whilst you live comfortably and go to plant medicine circles on the weekend, do you think people in the Amazon right now are actually getting anything other than the ones that are on the surface who are offering you the stuff? No. Do you live down there and give them money? No. So this is a plea to everyone. This is the first installment of many of which I will further the information and I want make people to make, be made privy to what's going on on the ground in Gabon. Nothing else matters. When you come to Ikara with Mbokra and Azambe, you are contributing in a reciprocal system or protocols of true Bwiti, which return directly to the people and you learn the art form of the delivery and you protect, sustain and preserve tradition and culture. We are not part-time Gungas, that does not exist. Our whole life is devoted to this process, every single last living aspect. There is not one other person that is truly living as a Ganga, because to be a Ganga you must live that way, and you must be living in the forest. There isn't any. All of these people are baloney, and they're all going to be profiting from the systems of which I'm talking about. So please, if you're interested, reach out. We need to be aware of who and what and where our money is going when we come towards Iboga. Because ethically and spiritually, you're taking energy from that direction. If you find yourself affiliated in your healing journey with one of these people, you are taking negative energy. So much love to my Babongo brothers and sisters. Otimoi, um, Ovio, King Adamangana, my spiritual father. Bwekai, brothers and sisters in Bokra and Zambe. Basi, may we move forward with God, may we reconcile, and may we protect and preserve our culture and tradition for the benefit of humankind, not for the benefit of a company 